we're talking trains now. Look, here's a coal train coming. And look at this circle of tanker cars. This is Fort Laramie, Wyoming. You're out west when you see a barbed wire wreath instead of a grapevine wreath. Says, welcome to the town of Fort Laramie. 250 good people and seven sore heads. Oops, six sore heads. Here lies the seventh sore head. A gravesite with some boots. How about a purple Ford pickup? It's available. Hogan Trail Memorial. To all pioneers who passed this way to win and hold the West. Trail cross one mile south of this point. Here's where we are, where we are. Trail. 300,000 immigrants travel on the Oregon Trail between 1842 and 1860 from Independence, Missouri, ending in Oregon. Mormon Trail, 700,000, 70,000 church members, tens of thousands from British Isles and Scandinavia followed the trail from Utah between 1847 and 1869, nearly. A couple of hombres here. They're having lunch in Vicky's Bar in Fort Laramie, Wyoming. Fort Laramie was perhaps the single most important location in America's expansion into the West. Founded in 1834 as a trading post, it became a military fort in 1849. Until it closed in 1890, Fort Laramie influenced major events in the history of the Trans-Mississippi West. From the eras of the fur trade, the Oregon Trail, and the Indian Wars, the fort served as an American foothold in a rapidly changing West. Oh, look how long these poles are. Transcontinental Telegraph. Between July 4th and October 24th, 1861, a telegraph line was constructed by the Western Union Telegraph Company between St. Joseph, Missouri and Sacramento, California, thereby the, completing the first high-speed communication link between the Atlantic and Pacific Coast. This service met the critical demand for fast communication between these two areas. This telegraph line operated until May 1869 when it was replaced with a multi-wire system constructed with Union Pacific and Central Pacific Railroad lines. Fort Laramie, military post, June 16, 1849 through March 2, 1890. This would be the parade grounds. An ox cart. Ox carts used, were used extensively during the 1830s fur trade. Carts were made primarily of oak and relatively inexpensive. Made entirely of wood, repairs can may easily be and readily be made from, from available materials. A distinct trait of the cart was noise made by the wooden axle that could be heard for miles around. There were some that died from it, but for the most part, they were able to avoid cholera outbreaks because they drank coffee. This is the barracks. This is a nice area here, especially in the shade. There's a cannon. And here's the, uh, is this the caisson? Oh, here's the, uh, the caissons go rolling along. 12 pound mountain howard, sir. Wow. 
This is the Laramie River. They look at this tree here with the spreading limbs. It, it must be a willow tree. Wow, never seen one spread out like that. This is the barracks. Look at this veranda. Talk about a long one. Look how thick the walls are. Patrols, though, are not what you would think of in terms of military action. I mentioned that one time a year you'd fire your weapon in anger. It's mostly things like, mostly patrols like, all right, we're going to go meet the mail down in Cheyenne. I guess these were the stables or equipment sheds. This was the cavalry barracks. This is more or less your standard wagon. It wasn't as big as the Conestogas. The quarter, quartermaster's area of the post. Look at this picture. 3,500 wagons, 40,000 oxen, 1,000 mules, 4,000 drivers. Hand carts, the new plan. Between 1856 and 1860, nearly 3,000 members of the Mormons brought their air fleet possessions in two wheel carts. The wagons would carry the uh, food and water. This is the Laramie River. The Prairie Schooner. Actually it wasn't the uh, Conestoga, it was the smaller wagons. Wagons carried food, cooking utensils, bedding, the minimum amount of clothing, firearms, medicine, bandages, lanterns, and sewing supplies. Most of the immigrants walked along the side of the wagon. Only the elderly, sick, or very young riding beside. Embassy on the Northern Plains. As the main outpost for the U.S. government on the Northern Plains, Fort Laramie served as an official meeting ground between the United States of America and the sovereign tribes of the Northern Plains. This would be the Huskow. The jail. Look at the uh, cupola vent at the top. This is the parade ground. Wasn't used that much for drilling. They were too busy doing other things. But they had a Sunday dress parade every Sunday. Old Bedlam was the bachelor officer's quarters. This would be where they had their meals. This is uh, to show how the building was put together. Adobe, brick. And this is where they slept through to a room. This is the kitchen and food preparation room. Different building here. Oh, look at that. I guess this was the base commander. No, it was the post-surgeon's home. Bearskin rugs, little stoves. This was the, the surgeon's office, I suppose. I like this chairs and bench. Wow, 
another nice quarters here. Look at the piano. Dining room. In Colorado and went to Bent Old Fort. I don't know if you've been there. They, it's amazing. They, it's a lot like this, but a little more, a lot more rusty. Post office. Guarantee down. 